Good evening. I warmly welcome you all to this special conference Sunday service. Let us raise our feet and sing together, O oh, for a thousand tongues. My dear people of God, I do welcome all of you into this uh, divine worship in this evening in the name of risen Lord. Very special welcome to our ministers who are retiring in this year and their siblings, their all the friends and uh, others who have gathered here to intercede for them as well as all the ministers who have gathered in this holy sanctuary after the annual Methodist conference to give glory and honor to our living Savior. What a great God whom that we believe and such a wonderful God that we can claim we are his children, we are his sons and daughters. As well as very warm welcome those who are joining us online in this evening from this country and beyond to worship this wonderful God as one family. Let us pray. Come reality beyond all words. Come person beyond all understanding. Come rejoicing without end. Come light that knows no evening. Come unfailing expectation of the saved. Come raising of the fallen. Come resurrection of the dead. Come all powerful and for unceasingly you. Create, refashion, and change all things by your will alone. 
Come for your name fills our hearts with longing and is ever on our lips. Come for you are yourself the desire that is within. Come, my breath, my life. Come, consolation of my humble soul. Come and bless us in this evening. Amen. Let us sing together Tamil lyric, poetry to Tupel. Yeah. 
Please be seated. This is the time for confession. <clears throat> Let us observe a period of silence and realize the presence of God and examine ourselves. We have sinned against God in our thoughts, words, and deeds. We have not loved our neighbors. We have failed in many things that we should do. We have kept silent in the time of injustice. We have walked away from the way of God. Therefore, let's bring all our weakness and failures before God and confess our sins. Most merciful Father, we have come to the presence and we confess our sins that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in our thoughts, words, and deeds by what we have done and by what we have not done. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves, and we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We deserve only your wrath and punishment. Lord, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may follow your will and walk in your way to the glory of your holy name. Cleanse us from all our sins and take away our guilt. In the name of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, God has redeemed us. His mercy has given his son to die on the cross for our sake. By this act of God, he has forgiven all our sins, whatever they may be. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us rise up and sing together. Sing hallelujah. Lo adure samada, samatana res vihida.
Now we are going to listen to the Old Testament reading, followed by the Epistle reading. The Bible reading is taken from Book of Psalm, chapter 116, verses 119, verses 12 to 19. Saminuni. Mama oba pasasami. Obe panat mata igan nu amanu. Oba prakashakala sielu niti. Mage muin patrua herim. Sielu yase sure piti unta vada. Obe siksha marge hi piti ben. Obe nyo gana bahavana karani. Marge marge kerehi. Mage sita yomukarani. Obey Niamol to Priyavani, Obey Wachanea, Amataka Nokarani, Obey Mehekaruge Hapat again, Honin Salaka Balu Mana, Evita Mama, G. Watwani, Obey again me, Pavatwani, Obey Vivastavi, Pudumagi and Dana Pinisa, Magi S. Pahadu Mana, Mama Mihi Peter, Mother Kalakata was on him, Obey Aknavan, Maging Nasangu Mana. Amen. Irandam Tirumari Pada Mahe Apostle Nahi Yovan Elidine Mudalam Nirubam Mudalam Adiharam Aindam Vasana Mudal Patam Vasanam Bere. The epistle is taken from 1st John chapter 1 verses 5 to 10. Thirvan Oliya irukkarar avaril evvala venum iril illai. Ithu nangal avadatthil kheattu unggalukku arivikira visheshama irukkaradu. Nam avarode aikkiya patrakula aikkiya patrakula indu solliyum iril illai nadakkarula irindhal satyatin padi nadavamal Poi Solula Irupom Our Oli Likra the Pole Namum Oli Lenadandal Uruver Road Uruver Aiki a Patirupom Our dear Kumarna Yesu Christ in Iratham Sahala Pavangalim Niki Name Suti Harikum Namaka Pava Mille in Bomanal Namai Name Vanjikula Irupom Satyam Namakul Iradu Namuria Pavangali nam Arika etal Pavangali namaka menit Ella aniaetim niki Namai sutti heripatke Our unmayum nidium ullavara irkarar Nam pavum saye ville inbo manal Nam our e poyerakula irupum Our dear Marthai namakulira the inbade Amen. Dear friends, during the previous year, two of our precious ministers have finished their earthly race. They have been called to God's presence to glorify His name as they are serving in the heaven for His Majesty. That is, Reverend S.S. Tambiraja and Reverend K. Kirubakaran. 
one of oldest and senior minister, as well as a very young minister. And also, I do want to mention that one of our precious vice president, Mrs. R. Balasingham, also entered to glory during last year. So Reverend S. S. Tambiraja's obituary will, will be read by Reverend Dolip Fernando. Reverend Satya Raj S. Tambi Raja was one of the colorful members of the Methodist clergy. He was liked by all who associated with him because of his lovable nature and friendly ways. Reverend Satya was the second son of a family of eight boys. Reverend A.C. Tambi Raja his father was a minister of the Church of South India. His father and mother, together with Sister Elizabeth Baker, a Methodist missionary from England, founded Navajivanam in Parantan, a center for, uh, for the rehabilitation and care of youth from troubled and deprived homes. Thousands of young boys were looked after in the center and were given a secure foundation in their lives and trained to be productive, stable young people who could be of service to their society. Reverend Sarpi Tambi Raja was born in Batukote in 1941. He was educated at Dreiberg College, Chavakacheri, Jaffna Central College and Jaffna College. He received his theological education at the United Theological, spent one and a half years at Selyok, Birmingham, where they both obtained the Diploma in Communication. During his ministry, he held various posts as district and conference levels and served in the conference standing committee for many years. He was also appointed as Assistant Secretary of Conference and was elected to the post of the Chairman of the Central District of the Methodist Church, Sri Lanka, in 2007. Reverend Sati was an outstanding pastor who visited his people regularly and was with them in all their life situations. He was greatly loved wherever he served because of his pastoral concern and his loving care for his people. He was a people's person and was quick to make friends with all those uh, he associated with. He was popular with beggars, with uh, three-wheeler drivers, with vendors in uh, the marketplace and on the streets. He would befriend people from all walks of life. And he was easy with them and would even pray with them, even though some of them were not Christians. Reverend Sati was an ecumenical-minded person. He had good relations with pastors and priests of other denominations. He was one of those who was actively involved in the Christian Confederation of Churches, we sought to bring churches closer to one another after the church union scheme failed. He also had good relations with clergy of other religions and uh, tried to promote inter-religious activities. Whenever he left a station, clergy from other religions would come and say how much they appreciated his friendship. Reverend Sati was a man of prayer. He prayed with great feeling, and people were helped and comforted in their times of need. Like Daniel, he prayed three times a day, even after he retired, and had a long list of those whom he interceded for. Those in the East will remember the part he played, 
caring for oppressed, suffering people during the war. He intervened on their behalf to uh, secure justice, relief, and freedom for them. In Kalmune, he looked after 200 internally displaced people who were called scavengers at that time during a very difficult stage in the war. And this was not appreciated by the powers that be. Doris, his wife, was a great strength to Reverend Sati in his ministry. She stood by him in all the work that he did and uh, encouraged him. Sati encouraged Doris to further her theological education and she was able to obtain her BTH and MDiv from Lanka Bible College and become a local preacher as well. The Missio Dei uh, which, and the Peace Ballet that she organized during the war time were highly appreciated because they reached a very high level of youth drama at that time. They took the message of peace at a time when there was conflict over the whole of Sri Lanka. Reverend Sati retired in 2009 after 36 years of ministry and was called to eternal rest on the 3rd of January, 2022. There is no doubt that he heard his master say to him, well done, thou good and faithful servant, when he reached that eternal home. Reverend A. Kiruba Karan's obituary will be read by Reverend S. W. Tevakuma. Reverend Arasaratnam Kiribaharan was born on 11th May 1982 at Komari in the Eastern Province to Mr. Kadrikamat Thambi Joseph Arasaratnam and Mrs. Sababadi Pillai Thangamma. He was the youngest child in the family with a brother and five sisters. His God-fearing parents brought him up in a Christian atmosphere. This environment helped him to grow and grasp the Christian faith. During his childhood, he attended the Sunday school at Komari Methodist Church. Reverend Kirbaharan had his primary and secondary education at Komari Methodist Mission Tamil Mahavidyalaya. Due to his active participation in several youth camps, he felt that he had a great desire to serve the Lord. This desire became very evident through his association with Christian atmosphere and in many other ways. Reverend Kiribaharan was accepted as a local worker in 2002 and sent to Kota Munai Sekit. The annual conference of 2006 accepted him into full-time ministry, responding to God's calling to the ministry and sent him to TCL, Pilimethalawe, in 2007. He completed his theological studies at Theological College of Langa, Pilimethalawe, from 2007 to 2011 and obtained BTS degree and college diploma. He was appointed as a preacher on trial on 30th April 2011 and accepted into full connection and the 2014 annual conference. He was, he was ordained on 6th November 2014 at Kota Muni Methodist Church during the tenure of Reverend Dr. A. W. Jebanesan as president of conference. He married Sudajini on 14th September 2013 and God blessed them with the daughter Ketsia. He served Kaluvan Kerni, Akkaripattu, Kattukale, Katteveli, and lastly at Mudur societies. Reverend Kirbaharan was a simple and humble servant of the God of of God who served his master for 10 years. He was a well-accepted pastor 
and had a deep passion to work among the needy and diligent in his pastoral work. He was a very good preacher, theological thinker, good reader, and a colleague. He was also a good singer and actor. His unfor unforeseen premature passing away on 19 July 2022 at 40 years of age was a great shock to all of us. We praise and thank God for his untiring service for the Lord in MCSL. May his soul rest in peace and rise up in glory. However, we have been reminded by our Lord Jesus Christ that we'll, we will meet Reverend Kiribaharan face to face on the on the beautiful show. Now Reverend S.S. Uh, Jnana Raja will offer a word of prayer. For that prayer, I'd like to invite both family members to front. Uh, Reverend Kirubakaran, as well as his Thambi Raja's family members, please come front for this special word of prayer. Let us pray. Piratanai Sevo Maha Let us remember especially the late Reverend S. S. Tambi Raja and Reverend A. Kirbagaran and Mrs. Ranji Balasingam in our prayers. And also let's pray for our leaders and members whom we have gone to the glory of God during these days. Reverend Atile Mandadabu, Engel Matile Vandi, Katrudi Sanidana Tile Adendrikra, Thambi Raja Podagar, Kiribaharan Podagar, Tirumadiranji Bala Singam, Ade Polang Rudi Tirichabili Rikunda, Taleverhel, Angataverhel, the Reverend Adisendo over her car home, Nam Pirati Po. Let's give thanks for each of our loved ones whom we remember today, for all the ways in which their lives touch us during the difficult as well as the good times. Kadabulukanan Mamti Selatavom, Yurudia Valinale, Todapata Vilehel, Savalner in the Vilele. Aurudi Anbinali Nam Irka Pati Aurudu Nangal Vanda Valke Wonder Kahom Nam Kadabulakanandi Selitu Gracious Lord, we honor and thank for those who have given lives for the service to our church community. When the need was greatest, they stepped in and did their duties spiritually during their lifetime. Engal Matile Vanda in the Ulya Karal Kaha, Tirichabai Kudumbatile, our Say the Panikale Kaha, Saryana Neratile, Kadavula Ralai Terri Say the Alaiti, our Nura Say the Ella, Panikale Kahabum, Nam Kadavulik in Andisilatuom. Help us to honor their memories by caring for the family members they have left behind. May we never forget what they have done and sacrificed their lives for the betterment of our community. Our old Kuli Vala Nam Kadavlandi Liangale Opadipom. Heavenly Father, you have created a new heaven and a new earth for all those who passed away from this world. Anbana Revene, in the Ulahatin Valke Mudite, over a Manidar Kahavum, over a Kadavle Pulahal Kahavum, or a Pudia Vanatayim. Or Pudia Pumiyam near Umudatle Vaitrikri. We are grateful for the promise 
that you will wipe tears from our eyes and that you are ready to welcome your people, comfort your people with the assurance of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Anbana Adavale, Umudi Anbinale, Emakinir, Tanda Vakatatam, Engal Kandir Raljava Tim Turaiti, Engal Kaha Aitam Banapata and the Salatili, Nam Overwurum and Bodum, Viranambikiodum Nirandra Mahavale, Yur Sarapana Valki, or the Kurta Kriya and Anambikiodu, in the Kurumbatari, or the Uramir Hale, Ilorim Umudia Patile, Opadikurum. The Mandate Muria Padatili, Talmi Odi Jabikuru Mangalella Pidavi. Amen. Friends, let us sing together another glorious hymn. We'll rise and sing, Thou my everlasting portion. So it is my great honor and privilege to appreciate, to thank God for the people who have really toiled for many years in this church and they now want little rest. They want to sit. They want to sit because their life was so busy. And during two years back as well as in this last year, there are 
four ministers have applied for their retirement. That is one of our previous president, Reverend Asiri P. Pereira. The minutes will uh, read by Reverend S.J. Kadri Sapille and Reverend A.R. Mahendran. Reverend S.K. Kadragamar will read the minutes. Reverend Chris, Christy Fernando, Reverend Sumit Viramunda will read the minutes. And uh, Reverend R. Anbalagan, Reverend Sam Subendran will read the minutes. <clears throat> Minute on Reverend Asri Priyalal Pereira. Asri Priyalal Pereira was born on the 11th January 1958 in Colombo. He was a second son of Reverend Theodore Henry Pereira and Delicia Joyce Pereira, who were serving at Gaul Circuit Kalahe Society at the time of his birth. Reverend Theodore H. Pereira pioneered the divine healing ministry in the Medici Church. Sri Lanka, and Mrs. Delicia Pereira was an English-trained teacher. He had his primary education at Richmond College, Gaul, from 1963 to 1967. From 1968 to 1969 at Carey College, Colombo. In 1970, he studied at Sidhuwa Methodist Junior School. From 1971 to 1974, he went back to Carey College, Colombo. Though he grew up in a Methodist mission house, he did not have any intense intention to become a minister, but he had an intention to become a medical doctor. In the year 1971 at Carey College, he came down in, in his science marks at the third examination, third term examination. And end results was, in 1972 January, he was placed in a combined arts and science class, which made him realize that he will not become a medical doctor. On the 7th January 1974, he walked into the new classroom, feeling disappointed with himself. While seated in the class, he saw a clear blue sky through the window of the class and heard an inner voice saying, I have closed the door that you chose for yourself. Now I surrender you, yourself, to me and walk through a new door. And he will immediately felt a great peace within himself. On that night, he prayed together with his parents and surrendered himself to serve God. During the next two years of his schooling, he had a great opportunity to begin his work for God. His principal, Reverend Dr. W. G. Vikramasinghe gave him an opportunity to share his testimony at college Thanksgiving service, and thereafter he assigned he was assigned to conduct chapel service on a roster basis. His real experience of forgiveness and salvation took place in the year 1966 at a revival meeting conducted by Reverend Dr. James Smith. Having got through the, his GCO level exam, he wanted to test his calling. He was invited by Reverend P.B. Rajasinghe, then superintendent, minister of the Moratumula Circuit, who appointed him as an honorary local worker of the Moratumula Circuit. He also worked under the superintendency of Reverend Victor Salgado in the Moratumula Circuit, who guided and molded him very well. During the same period, he was involved in the Ministry of Healing and Devsa Sevava, which was also an opportunity to test his calling. On 20th March 77, he was accepted as a lay preacher of the Methodist Church. He entered the Theological College of Lanka, Pilimatalava, in July 1977 as a private candidate, as he was not sure whether he should serve the church or Devsa Sevava. In 1981, April, he passed out from the Theological College with a BTH degree, Sarampur, and applied to Methodist Church to serve at Devasa Sevava as a Methodist minister in the healing ministry. He candidated through the Candy Circuit Quarterly Meeting to be a ministerial candidate. The annual conference, which was held in 19, uh, 
81, accepted him as a minister on trial and was inducted at Katunayaka Methodist Church on the 13th of September, 1981. During the probation period, he served at Dalupata Society at the Kuran and Nigambo Circuit under the superintendency of Reverend Victor Salgadu and Yatinur Vidya Society, the Kandy Circuit under the superintendency of Reverend uh, Dr. Kingsley Mutaya. He, he gratefully remembers his two superintendent ministers, Reverend Victor Salgado, a fatherly figure who was a strict disciplinarian, and Reverend Dr. Kingsley Mutaya, who became his mentor to mold him for the future leadership in the church. He was ordained on 8th November 1984 at Ravatavata Methodist Church. In January 1985, he was released by the Methodist Conference to serve as a Methodist minister in the healing ministry at Devasuva Sevao. He functioned there as a director of spiritual therapy. In 1989, May, he proceeded to New Zealand to do his clinical pastoral education, studies at the Auckland Public Hospital under the Presbyterian Support Services. He completed the first two units in New Zealand and switched over to the Royal North Hospital in Sydney and completed the advanced unit in clinical pastoral education. He obtained his membership in the College of Clinical Pastoral Education in New South Wales, Australia. On his return to Sri Lanka in March 1990, he was appointed by the Swasevava Society as its president and minister in charge. In 1994, August, after several months of wrestling in prayer and faith, he, together with his wife, Sharmira, decided to return to the Methodist Church and serve in the itinerant ministry. President of the Methodist, the President of the Methodist Church, late Reverend Dr. Kingsley Mutaya, encouraged him, together with the former President Reverend Somasiri K. Pereira, during this time. The Methodist Conference 1994 accepted Reverend Asri back to his itinerant ministry and was appointed to serve as Nugaiko the Methodist Church as its first resident minister. In January 1966, he was stationed in Kulubitia Society as its minister in charge, and thereafter he appointed as superintendent minister of Dehibala, Mount Lavania circuit. He guided the circuit to accept the re-demarcation as the Mount Lavania Maharagama circuit in the midst of all lot of heartbreaks. When the new circuit was established, he voluntarily handed over the superintendency to a senior minister and continued to function as the minister of the Mount Lavania society. Circuits and institutions he traveled. Kurana Nigambo Circuit at Dalupata Society, 1981-1983. Candy Circuit at Yatinura Vidya Society, 1984. Devasuva Sevava, 1985-1994. Colombo South Circuit, 1995-1999. Nugegada Society for one year, Kulipitya Society for four years. Dehivala Mount Lavania Circuit and its successor, Mr. Uh, sorry. Mount Lavania Maharagama Circuit, and in Mount Lavania Society, 2000 to 2004, superintendent for two years. Ampara Circuit, external superintendent for two, three, 2003 to 2007. Colombo South Circuit, Velavata Chapel Lane Society, 2005 to 2009, superintendent for one year. Colombo North Circuit, Matakulia, 2010 to 2014, superintendent all five years. Novarelia Circuit, external superintendent, 2011 to 2014. Pitul Gala Yatiantura external superintendent 2010 to 2014. Maradana Kulipitiya Circuit, Kulipitiya Society, 2015, January to July, superintendent for six months. Offices held in the Methodist Church. Secretary for Faith and Order Committee, Assistant Secretary of Conference, Secretary of Central District Synod, 1999 2003. Chairman of the Central District 2010 to 2014, President Bishop of the Methodist Conference, August 2015, August 2020. United Evangelical Mission Involvement. Reverend Asri currently served as an elected member of the Asia Regional Board and General Assembly. He was a resource person on the church's response to charismatic movement at the UEM seminars held in the Philippines and Karagwe Diocese of Evangelical Lutheran Church in Tanzania. Involvement in international forums. He was admitted to the life membership of the Order of St. Duke, the physician in New Zealand, an ecumenical order for the healing ministry in 1989. 
He was invited by Irish Methodist Church to be a resource person in the overseas mission conferences and served together with Dr. Uh, Reverend Dr. Norman Taggart in the Coloradine circuit from January to March 2000. He was invited by the Dortmund Church to participate and be a resource person at the 500th Jubilee celebrations of the Reformation in October 2017. Involvement in other Christian organizations, chairman of the Board of International Needs Ministry, 1995, Lanka, 1995 to 2009, chairman of the Theology College of Lanka Governing Board from 2018 to 2020. Involvement in national issues. He actively involved himself in ecumenical and interreligious forums for national peace and reconciliation. During his tenure as president bishop, he became voice on the national issues part pertaining to justice and peace issue. He actively participated in public demonstration for rights of the plantation workers, the, fish, the fishing community affected by the construction of the Col Col Colombo Fort City and for the rights of the families of the missing person. He was instrumental in gathering a few, few church leaders in talking to different political uh, leaders to bring a settlement during the 52-day undemocratic government in October 2018. He publicly spoke and stood up for the rightful place of the Christians and uh, people of other faiths in Sri Lanka that seeks to call itself a singular Buddhist country. After the blatant attack on the Anuradhapura Methodist Center on, on Palm Sunday, in April 2019, he gathered a large crowd of people on April 19th to 19, April 19, 2019. Good Friday, Good Friday from the Middle Churches. All Christian denominations, including the heads of the different denominations and people of other religions, for a silent public demonstration on the Gold Road in front of the Kolubitiya Methodist Church, he openly voiced his opposition, opposition to rising of the cults and false prophets within the Christian church in Sri Lanka family. Reverend Asri married Shamila Manomani, Fernando, daughter of Ralph Srima Fernando of Panadura Methodist Church on the 16th of May, 1981. Shamila is a woman of prayer seeking to give the best to God in her husband's ministry. Shamila always added colors to Asri, Reverend Asri's ministry with uh, gifts of music and organizational ability. She set up the MCSL choir, bringing the talented people from different churches of MCSL to sing at the Methodist Conference and other official gatherings. The ama amazing talents show she organized at Methodist Conferences brought members of a church distant areas to display their talents. Reverend Asri and Sharmila have been immensely blessed with their children, Suhadini and her husband, Robert, the two grandchildren, Ethan and Ellie, Samindra and his wife, Inesha, who have weaved into the Reverend Asri's ministry, especially using their gifts of music and singing. Reverend Asri Pereira is a strong disciplinarian who tries hard to maintain high ethical standard in the ministry. He's best known as the pastor who would be with the people in times of difficulties and sorrow. Reverend Asri Pereira is an eloquent preacher who who uses homely illustration to engage his listeners and challenge. Reverend Asri is an able administrator, very conscious in keeping to the principles of good governance and working with efficiency and good management. After his chairmanship of Central District, he was appointed as the president in the Methodist Church. As president, he tried to bring circuit institution under the church to act according to Methodist principles and practices. As President Bishop, he displayed many strong qualities that benefited the church during his tenure as president. He was personally instrumental, committed in making the clergy and lay members of the church as faithful, fruitful and courageous disciples of Jesus Christ. Towards the end, through the different departments of church he organized retreat seminars and workshops to strengthen the discipling task as commanded by the Lord Jesus Christ. Retirement, Reverend Nasri takes his retirement at the age of 62 plus, under the optional age of retirement. He firmly believes that he should now step out of the administrative orbit of the church, decrease himself, allowing the younger generation to increase 
He is focusing on facilitating clinical pastoral, pastoral education during his retirement in a wider circle of churches and Christian institutions. We wish him a period of happy retirement and pray that God will continue to use his gifts to bring blessings and growth in the church. Now we will read the uh, obituary uh, minutes of uh, Reverend A.K. Mahendran's minutes will be read by Reverend S.S. S. Khadragama, S.K. Minute on the Reverend Arumugam Rasaratnam Mahendran. Reverend Mayandran was born on the 8th of August, 1953, at Baticolo. From the age of five years, he was brought up by the Methodist missionary, Sister Elizabeth Baker, affectionately called by people of Sri Lanka, Baker Amma. Reverend Mahendran from his infancy was nurtured under the strong influence of a devoted and committed missionary, Sister Elizabeth Baker, whose services were recognized by the Queen of the United Kingdom and she a member of the British Empire. From 1958 to 1976, his childhood and teenage period, he had the counsel, warmth, and love of Reverend and Mrs. A.C. Dambaraja and Reverend Sati Dambaraja, who were the founders of Navajivanam. While living in Navajivanam, his primary education was in Murugananda Mahavidyalayam at Murasimata. His secondary education was in St. John's College, Jaffna, and in St. John's Academy. During this period, he developed his social dimension by being in a hostel, excelled in studies, involved very much in various activities at St. John's College. In addition to the involvement, in the sports, he was passionately served the student Christian movement and was in the forefront. Having come to know his performance in the mission of God in this college, his principal, late C.E. Anandarajan, encouraged him to join the ministry. And in this period, Reverend Mahindran received the call to serve the Lord full time. With the support of Namajivanam, he began his theological education in 1966, uh, 1976, as a private can uh, candidate at Theology College of Langa, Pilimatilava. In 1977, he experienced the communal rights and was in life danger. Then the principal, Swamisi Perra, recommended and sent him to Tamil Nadu Theological College Seminary, Madura, India. There he was accepted as a third year student in BD and he successfully completed the BD diploma and later obtained the BD. In 1980, he entered ministry as a local worker and candidate, and he was candidated to the ministry in Jaffna Circuit under the superintendent, Reverend Dr. S.W. Arya Raja. In 1981, 
he was stationed at Mathura circuit where he had the opportunity and experienced to serve the rubber estate worker at Degi Gaspar. He was inducted as a probation minister in 1982 at Mathura Church. In this circuit, he had the opportunity to conduct and preach and worship and to conduct worship services in Singhala and occasionally to preach in English at Gold Methodist Church. He experienced in 1983 the Holocaust and miraculously saved by the Mathara church members, one member who kept him in his home for two months. From Madurai, he went to Kallar, Changaladi, and in 1984 served in Tringameli circuit under the external superintendent minister, late Reverend Jairaja Singham. In, in 1985, he was stationed at Kalmuna circuit. There he got married to Thervamalar Sandhya, whose parents were devoted members of Madhuri Church, Kalar. 1986, he was stationed at Kalar. He was ordained in 1987, and as an ordained minister, he served in the following circuits. Jampeta, Mannar Murungan, Abdura Mantagama, Kandi, Kota Munai, Puliyandivu, Kaluvanjikudi, and Jambatta in Jambatta Vatala circuit. During his circuit ministry, 1997, he went again to Tamil Nadu Theological Seminary in Madura and successfully obtained Master in Theology in Communication. He was very much empowered by the scholars Reverend Dr. Samuel Amardam, Reverend Dr. Francis Dayachand Kaur, and Reverend Dr. Thomas Tangaraja Thomas. And he raised his horizon and had a deeper understanding of the Bible and theological issues. Since he possessed the postgraduate qualification in theology, the church released him to serve at Theological College of Langa to be the staff, and he lectured from 2008 to 2014. In 2002 to 2007, while he was a superintendent minister at Kota Mune Circuit, uh, he served as a secretary of the Northern East District Synod. He served in the liturgical committees and contributed in the publications of lyric books. In his early part of his ministry, he fully contributed by organizing youth camps and youth activities of the Methodist Church. While in his ministry, he attended the indigenous music seminar in Indonesia and Philippines. And he attended the Methodist International Conference in Oxford, UK. He uh, attended the special program in Germany during the 200 years of celebration of the Dortmund Church. He is a composer of indigenous lyrics and songs based on the various contextual situations. He produced a lot of series of divine spiritual songs which are very much touching. All his children are qualified and skilled in music and contributing to churches in this field. He is consciously did this pastoral oversight and fulfilled the spiritual needs of the society members. 
he is concerned about the poor and always willing to help and do things for others enthusing and enthusiasm in others which he displays in his undertakings he is a minister of convictions have strong views on church and mission and during his ministry he introduced indigenous christian songs in the church we are served but faced lot of challenges he is believed uh, he is blessed with a wife thawa meller who is a great supporter to his ministry she is a fully accredited local preacher and followed a practical course on psychological counseling obtained a certificate from sri lankan national association of counselors he is married two daughters are lc gobinath hilda deshani roshan and adisha presently a student and one grandson lionel rao ramayandran is now retiring at the age of 69 completed 40 years as a minister in the medhari church sri lanka we thank and praise god for the services of the servant of god and we wish reverend mahindran and his family a happy peaceful retired life but full of service to the humanity and god thanks minutes of uh, reverend christopher and who and summit we remember will be read reverend christopher nandu minute on reverend christopher nandu reverend purnul kharge christy lenard fernando was born on the 26th of september 1960 in udavela khadrugahamul mulawatta to purnul kharge simon fernando and mrs Madhur Singh age Dona Grace Miraya Margaret Fernando as the second child of the family he has four sisters and one brother who is Reverend P Sisira Fernando Reverend Christopher Fernando married to married in 1989 to Mrs Chamari Rupika Moravaka from Dalupata Society who was then the organist there their children are upeka rukshini salomi chaturika shilomi chandima and chatuska krishendra ravan kristi fernando has to study in five schools as he happened to travel with his father who was district evangelist in the methodist church The schools were Government Primary School Valhapitiya, Roman Catholic Government School, and Mahavidyalaya Kuliyapitiya, Dhulapitiya Mahavidyalaya, Saint Anthony's Mahavidyalaya. He was accepted as a local preacher in Murutmulla Circuit in 1981. He received the calling for ministry on the day of his trial service. at kadalana through the late reverend theodore h pereira reverend christie served as a local worker in several societies kalahe richman kuliyapitiya kalambu north and dalupata 
He entered the Te Theological College of Lanka, Bilimathalava in 1988 and got his BTH in 1992 and ordained in 1994. Reverend Christopher Nandu served in Bandaravela, Petyagoda, Indibedda, Tummodara, Badulla, Egadoyana, Lianagemulla, Minuangoda, Kalambu City Mission, Uyana, Villoravatta, and Kalutara societies and served as the Superintendent Minister of NWP South, Uwa, Minuangada, and Kalutara circuits, and as the exter external Superintendent of Kitulgala Yatiantota uh, circuit. Reverend Christie obtained his MA degree in Christianity and Pali and Buddhist studies at the University of Caledonia. He served a short period in ETC Kal Elia as the principal, and also he served as the lay training secretary. Reverend Christie offered a rather silent service without much show off. Reverend Christie retires at the age of 62 years. We thank God for the way he used Reverend Christy Fernando in his vineyard. We wish Reverend Christy a happy, peaceful, and blessed retirement. God bless you. Minutes of Reverend R. Anbalagan. Reverend Sam Subendran will write. Minute on retiring Minister Reverend Rajadurai Anbalagan. Reverend Rajadurai Anbalagan was born on 20th June 1959 at Pottuville to Mr. Rajadurai and Mrs. Karuna Nayahi. He is the eldest in the family. His mother died when he was two years old due to bronchi asthma. Then his father married his sister Tevahi Amma and have two brothers and one sister. His God-fearing parents and grandparents brought him up in Christian atmosphere. This Christian environment helped him to grow and nurture the Christian faith. During his childhood, he attended the Sunday school at Kalmone Methodist Church. Reverend Anbalahan had his primary education at Kalmone Methodist Mission Tamil Mix School and his secondary education at Kalmone Wesley High School. In the year 1986 to 1988, due to Tamil Muslim riots, Reverend Anbalahan's family and the villagers displaced to Krista Illam Kalmune and lived there around three years. The love, concern, and commitment of the reverend workers and the staff of Krista Illam and their witness lifestyle and worship impressed Reverend Anbalahan and draw him closer to Jesus Christ. He felt that he had to share the love and concern which he received from them to be shared to others. After his secondary education, Reverend Anbalahan worked at a restaurant at Calcutta for two years and did textile business at Kalmone Town from 1982 to 1988. He felt that he can't continue the business as his conscience was not allowing to tell lies during his business. In the year 1989, his desire to serve the Lord became reality. He was stationed as an evangelistic worker at Mandur within Kalmone circuit due to a special need. In the year 1990, he was appointed as a local worker at Atura Matagama circuit, Nabada Society. At this station, he learned Sinhalese 
and teach Tamil and English to neighboring Sinhala speaking community. In the year 1992 to 1994, he was appointed to Thambalavatta as a local worker. While he was serving Kalmone Circuit, the conference accepted him into full time ministry. Responding to his God's calling in the year 1994 and was stationed him in Kotamana Circuit, Amir the Holy Society, as candidate for the field training. He completed his theological studies and formation at Theological College of Lanka, Pilimathalava, from 1995 to 1999 and obtained BTH degree. He is a singer and an actor. While he was a student at TCL, he was participated fancy dress competition every year at college day and won the prizes. Reverend Anbalahan got married Jayamala, who is a trained teacher and became a principal on 27th of May 1996 and blessed with three children, Stephen Jabanesan, Shalomi Stella, and Shama Virginie. Reverend Anbalahan was appointed as a preacher on trial in May 1999 and accepted into full connection in the year 2002 August annual conference. He was ordained on 2nd November 2002 at Kolpitiya Methodist Church during the tenure of Reverend Noel Fernando as the president of the conference. Reverend Anbalahan served in the following circuits. 1999 to 2003, Changladi Circuit, 2003 to 2005, Atura Matakama Circuit, 2005 to 2008, Manamurungan Circuit, 2008 to 2008, December, Trincomalee Circuit, 2009 to 10, Komari Circuit as a Superintendent Minister, 2011 to 2012, Tirukovil Circuit, 2013 to 2013 June, Mudur Wahari Circuit. 2013 July to May 2017, Kiran Ashram. June 2017 to December 2017, Kota Mune Circuit, Sivaburam Saukadi. And 2018 and up to now, Wala Chennai Kalkuda Society. In the year 2007, he participated ILI Conference, International Leadership Institute at Hyderabad for 10 days. He done a certificate course on human rights with Peradeniya University in the year 2004. Reverend Anbalagan is a simple and humble servant of God who served his master for 25 years, who was a well accepted pastor and had a deep passion for work among children. He was a very good teacher, colleague and a counselor. We wish him all the best for a peaceful retirement. As these ministers are going on their retirement, I would like to invite Reverend Duli Fernando to offer a word of prayer for them, as well as all the family members. Please come forward for this special word of prayer. Let us pray. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you on this important Conference Sunday that we can celebrate the service of these, your servants, whom you have called 
to be ministers of the gospel. What a privilege it is to be called. Even though we are unworthy, you choose us and call us to be those who will bear the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. And we thank you for these four servants of yours, for the many years they have labored in your vineyard, for the love they have shown to the people whom they served, for the way they have tried to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with others, for the lives they have touched with their love and care. Thank you, Lord, for the gifts you gave them, gifts of eloquence, gifts of teaching, gifts of preaching, gifts of caring for those who have fallen. We thank you for those whom they have been able to bring into your fold, to point them to the cross of Jesus Christ, and show them the way of salvation. We thank you for those who have been touched by their pastoral ministry, as they have been with people who have been hurting, lifted them up, encouraging them, teaching them the word of God and giving them the strength to face the challenges that life brings. We thank you, Lord, for their ministries. Thank you for the visions they have seen, for the way have, they have extended their mission, for the way that the frontiers of the church has been extended through the work that they have done. And now they have come to the point of retirement. Lord, we thank you for all the happy memories they have of the work that they have done. What a privilege it is to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, to be his humble servants, declaring through our lives and our words the wonderful story of salvation. Lord, we just pray that you will bless them in this time of retirement. They can look back and be thankful that you have been with them and blessed them and used them. Thank you for the gifts of leadership that you have given to them, for the way they have left, led the church in many different paths, and for the fact that you have always been with them and your power has been manifest in their lives. Lord, as they go into retirement, we pray that you will continue to be with them, that you will protect them, that you will look after them, that you will give them all the grace they need. We know that in one sense we never retire. As John Wesley has, as Charles Wesley said, Oh, that the world might taste and see the wonders of his grace the arms of love that embrace me. May all mankind embrace. His only righteousness I know. His saving grace to proclaim. It is all my business here below. To cry, behold the Lamb. Lord, we pray that there, you will open up new avenues of service for them. That they will continue to serve you. In different ways, no doubt but yet proclaiming your love, teaching people the way of the cross, denying themselves and following you wherever you lead them. So bless them. Thank you for their families, their spouses, their children who have supported them in their ministry. We pray that you will bless them too because they have had to sacrifice much for the sake of your mission. So we commit these, your children, into your hands. Lord, we thank you again for their colleagueship, for their partnership in the gospel, and for all that they have done. 
in the cause of Christ, for their faithfulness to the Methodist Church and their loyalty to the mission of God. We commend them, Lord, to your care, to your keeping, and pray that the next chapter in the, their life will be as glorious a chapter as the past chapters have been, as they live for you and serve you. For we ask all these things in and through the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now there will be a special song sung by Moore's Road Choir. This particular song is a Tamil song, and in this song, one word dominates everything, that is the word stotiram. The stotiram is actually a word of thanksgiving, and we say a very big thank you to our good Lord, who had helped us and guided us all these years past.
பணி செய்ய கண்டனீமத்தோத்திரமன்றும் சோத்திரமே பணி செய்ய கண்டனீமத்தோத்திரமன்றும் சோத்திரமே Now we will listen to the gospel reading. The reading will be read by newly inducted Vice President, Mr. Nishant Fernando. The gospel reading is taken from St. Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? 
it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its own stand and it, in, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father, as we now venture to meditate upon your holy words, we pray for the guidance of your spirit. We do not depend on our talent, ability, and our knowledge, but we pray that you will reveal us into the truths that are embedded in your scriptures. <coughs> Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Oh God, Amen. I'm sure most of you will be wondering how long I will preach. I can assure you that I try to be as brief as possible. As we come to the end of the conference, I think we need to remind ourselves that we, as people being called, as people being called as the Methodist fraternity, have a unique characteristics of being the people of the covenant. All Christians, all who follow Christ, are people of the covenant. And I think this particular emphasis of our Christian discipleship focused on the covenant between God and man is centric to the Methodist heritage. If you look at the Bible, there are many covenants that God makes with his people, beginning from Noah, Abraham, Jacob, Isaac, Moses, Jeremiah. And finally, we have an eternal living covenant in the life and ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, which we remember in every Holy Eucharist. If you really look at the covenant, there is always a story behind the covenant, an experience of the people, a story that is related over and over again by which God renews his covenant to his people. And in all these stories of covenant, it's not only just the story, but the story also has a unique characteristic. The story celebrates God's faithfulness, the story brings to our mind our unfaithfulness, and the story also beckons us to commit ourselves to depend on God's grace to fulfill the demands of the covenant that we have with God. In Psalm 116, which was read to us today, David has a particular experience, and in verse 12 he says, what shall I return to the Lord for all what he has done to me? And then he himself responds by saying, I will lift up the cup of salvation, call on the name of the Lord, and pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. I think that gives us a certain direction as to how in our lives we fulfill our demands of the covenant. It is always lifting up the cup of salvation. It is always calling on the name of the Lord because we ourselves are not capable of fulfilling even the vows that we make. And we pay our vows or fulfill our vows to the Lord in the presence of all people. Of course, the psalmist also had a story to tell. If you read the first few verses of Psalm, 116, he talks about his experience of being delivered from the death 
of God's protection to the simple and that God has always kept his eyes on us. And today as we finish our conference and go back to our places, we need to ask what story do we have to tell? In one sense, all our deliberations in the conference, the reports, the things that we spoke, all reflect the collective story of our church. It's not only the collective story, they have also the personal stories, the personal testimonies, as much as we heard today in this service. But all these stories is a, not a story about ourselves, but a story of what God means to us in our life. And therefore we are called to share this story and the storytelling is a, quite a challenge. It is not easy like a bedtime story that you relate to a child to make the child asleep. But this story, on the other hand, has to wake up the sleeping people, rouse the people, so that the story impacts the life of the others and therefore it's not an easy way to tell the story. The story is also risky because the stories that we have as Christians, as the people of Covenant, is also a risky story. It's a counter story to the stories of the world. And if the world that we live is in darkness, if the world that we live has only hopelessness in its day-to-day -day experience, our stories have to become <coughs> a counter story to that. And the third challenge in telling our story is that these stories are not just verbal manifestations, they are stories to be lived. And in one sense, if the story is lived, the story becomes the essence of our life and the essence that influence the listener, the society in which the story is related. Because the story is no longer dead stories, but it has on its own an influence that it has because it's a story that we live and it's a story about our living God. And therefore the story has essence like salt that brings a new taste, brings or transform into which it is put. It is also a story that dispels the darkness that we encounter. It's a story that brings hope among hopelessness and therefore it's always a story like the light that is lit and not hid under the bushel, but put on the hill so that everyone can see how light dispels darkness. It's always a story of hope. And that is why I believe Lord Jesus Christ, when he began his ministry and preached the Sermon on the Mount, he calls us to be the salt and the light of the world. The story that we have to say, the story that emanates from the covenant which reflects the faithfulness of God, influences the people that, with whom we relate to and it dispels the darkness that they and we experience together. But finally, the most important thing is that the way we tell the story, it's not our story. It is not a story of our, to bring glory to us. It's not a story about our achievements, but God, Jesus Christ very clearly says, let the people see what you do and bring glory to the Father in heaven. So always, my friends, remember our stories, the hero, the center, the focus is all about God and his faithfulness. The story just brings, uses us as a vessel, but it's a story where we have lived as an experience and we continue to live that experience, which brings impact to the people. Today, as the Methodist fraternity, having heard so many stories when you go back to the church, we need to ask ourselves, what story do I carry back that I can convey to the people in my family, to the people in our church, 
to the people in our society. It's not all about us, it's not our doings, our achievements or our glory, but the way we live and the way we convey the covenantal story is all about bringing glory to God. And as we come to the end of the service and as we commemorate and remember God's covenant in the Eucharist, it also recollects the story, a story of continuing God's faithfulness, a story where God continues to give us the hope that he is in front of us. He is the one who leads us. He is the one who strengthens us. But our duty is to be the vehicles of sharing that wonderful God story. So as, uh, as we, as a Methodist fraternity, we as the people of the covenant, let us examine ourselves as to what stories we have and commit ourselves to God that it is through his grace that we can continue to share that story. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you that you give us a very special story in each and every one of our lives. We thank you for being the faithful partner in all the covenantal stories we have. We also recollect, Lord, our unfaithfulness, our deviations, and sometimes in the way that we tell the story about you, we seek our glory, our pleasure, and our acceptance. And Lord, as we now come to the end of the conference and go in our own ways to continue to work in your vineyard, enable us to recollect that special story that we have so that we continue to live that story, a story that brings your faithfulness to the foremost and our faith, unfaithfulness so that we can always repent and commit ourselves to you, depending on your grace alone. We pray, Lord, that you'll continue to use us for your glory, so that people will see our work, they will hear our words, they will witness our lives, and only bring glory to your name. This we ask in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As a preparation for the Holy Communion, we will sing together Puru Sedi Devi Pidua, Singhala Gita Kava, Puru Sedi Devi Pidua.
thanksgiving. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us pray. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, almighty and ever-living God, it is indeed right, it is our joy and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You created all things and made us in your image. When we had fallen into sin, you gave your only Son to be our Savior. He shared human nature and died on the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand in glory, where he lives forever to pray for us. Through him, you have sent your holy and loving spirit and made us your people, our all priesthood, to stand before you to proclaim your glory and celebrate your mighty acts. And so with all the company of heaven, we join in the of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of God. Let us kneel or be seated in an attitude of prayer. We praise you, Lord God, King of the universe, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. commanded us we do this in remembrance of him and we ask you to accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving grant that by the power of the holy spirit we who receive your gifts of bread and wine may share in the body and blood of christ make us one body with him accept us as we offer ourselves to be a living sacrifice and bring us with the whole creation 
your heavenly kingdom. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be given to you, Almighty Father, from all who dwell on earth and in heaven, throughout all ages. Amen. The bread we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in the one loaf. Amen. is prepared for all, come and receive this holy sacrament for your comfort. Go in peace. May the God of peace be with you always. Amen.
God of peace be with you always. Amen. Go in peace. May the peace of God be with you now and forevermore.
Go in peace. May the God of peace be with you always. Amen. Go in peace. May the God of peace be with you always. Amen. Let us all bow our heads together in prayer. Father, we thank you that you had fed us with your sacraments. You had enabled us to receive your grace. You had empowered us to go into the world and give us the assurance, Father, that having received your body and blood, that your presence ever abides with us and that you lead us through in our life's journey as we continue to serve in your vineyard to proclaim all the mighty acts that you had do and also remember and thanking you for your unfailing faithfulness, your goodness and for all your mercy. We pray, Lord, that you will bless each and every one of us and enable us to continue in this life's journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and all God's children today and forevermore. Amen. Further lead us. President and the chairpersons will lead the procession and then you can follow.